we will talk about atrial fibrillation signs and symptoms, why it is an important yet silent threat, and how to diagnose and treat it. Atrial fibrillation is the most common heart rhythm disorder. It causes an abnormal, rapid heartbeat. Atrial fibrillation is important because it increases the risk of stroke by about five times, and a significant portion of strokes are associated with atrial fibrillation. Stroke is one of the major causes of death and disabilities worldwide, and effective treatment of atrial fibrillation significantly reduces the risk of stroke. The most common symptom of atrial fibrillation is palpitations, which means a sensation of a rapid, fluttering, or pounding heartbeat. If a person has atrial fibrillation, almost 80% of the time they will experience episodes of palpitations. These palpitations can last for several minutes, hours, or even days. The more severe the disease, the more common the palpitations. People feel fatigue and unusual tiredness in 70% of cases with atrial fibrillation. In half of the cases, patients have difficulty breathing or discomfort during breathing, especially during physical activity or when lying down. Some patients experience feeling faint, unsteady, or near-fainting episodes. In most cases of atrial fibrillation, blood pressure is increased in about 70% of cases, but it can be opposite and decrease if heart failure develops. In more than 80% of cases of atrial fibrillation, the pulse is increased to more than 100 beats per minute, and it can even reach 180 beats per minute or higher. Around 30% of patients with atrial fibrillation have no symptoms. Atrial fibrillation causes the upper chambers of the heart, atria, to beat chaotically and ineffectively, leading to poor blood flow. This stagnant blood can form clots within the atria, and if a clot dislodges, it can travel to the brain and block blood flow, causing a stroke. So, the manifestation of atrial fibrillation can also be a stroke. Sometimes atrial fibrillation occurs intermittently, which is called paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. Around 2 to 3% of people have such intermittent atrial fibrillation. This means we cannot always catch it on an ECG, but it's important because, even though it comes and goes on its own, it still increases the risk of stroke. That's why to diagnose this type of atrial fibrillation, we need a halter monitor, which records the heart's electrical activity for 24 hours or more. When we measure the pulse during atrial fibrillation, it is irregular. This means some beats are strong, some are weak, and there is no consistent pattern to the timing of the heartbeats. This irregular pulse is characteristic of atrial fibrillation. Sometimes we have a pulse deficit, which means the heart beats faster, but we feel fewer pulses because the heart's contraction is not strong enough. This is called pulse deficiency. Now, let's explain how atrial fibrillation develops. For a normal heartbeat, electrical impulses are created in the upper part of the heart, called the atria, and then spread to the lower part, which are the ventricles. In the case of atrial fibrillation, instead of strong and rhythmic signal production, chaotic and irregular fast impulses are initiated in the atria. As a result, the atria start fluttering instead of contracting rhythmically. Some of these impulses reach the ventricles, causing fast ventricular contractions as well. This is why atrial fibrillation causes a faster heart rhythm than normal. If we ask why these abnormal electrical impulses are created, there are several explanations. First and most common is hypertension. High blood pressure over time damages heart chambers, causes fibrosis and scarring of the heart tissue, and increases the risk of chaotic electrical activity in the atria. Around 30% of cases are caused by hypertension. The second most common cause is coronary artery disease. When the blood vessels that supply the heart are damaged, and heart tissue loses blood and oxygen supply, it leads to altered iron channel function. The physical damage and scarring of the heart tissue cause chaotic electrical activity. One of the primary fundamental mechanisms of atrial fibrillation in many cases is the re-entry phenomenon. It means a situation where an electrical impulse continues to circulate through the heart tissue in a loop rather than following the normal one-way path. This causes continuous stimulation of the heart muscle, leading to arrhythmias like atrial fibrillation. This phenomenon is observed in the majority of cases of atrial fibrillation.
The third most common cause is heart failure, in which the heart chambers are enlarged and damaged. Structural changes and fibrosis in the atria cause chaotic electrical activities. Heart failure is responsible for 20% of cases. Valvular heart disease is also an important cause of atrial fibrillation. Hyperthyroidism, an increased production of thyroid hormone, also causes atrial fibrillation because thyroid hormone increases heart rate and excitability. However, such cases account for less than 5% of atrial fibrillation cases. Additionally, diabetes and obesity are important risk factors. In some young people, extreme endurance exercise can also cause atrial fibrillation. Marathoners, triathletes, and long-distance cyclists have an increased risk of atrial fibrillation. On the other hand, soccer players, basketball players, and weightlifters do not have an increased risk. On an electrocardiogram, ECG, we see irregular QRS complexes, which indicate an irregular rhythm, and the absence of P waves, which represent atrial excitation. The P waves are replaced by erratic fibrillatory waves, called F waves. The RR interval is highly variable, highlighting the irregular heartbeat. On ultrasound, the left atrium is usually enlarged, and the mitral valve can be stenotic or have mitral valve regurgitation. These conditions are also associated with atrial fibrillation. Transesophageal echocardiography, TEE, is particularly effective in detecting thrombi in the atria. Now, let's discuss the treatment of atrial fibrillation. When a person has atrial fibrillation, the first step is to assess their risk of stroke. If the risk is high, anticoagulant therapy should be started. Increased risk is calculated by considering if the person has hypertension, is older than 65 years, with the risk increasing with age, has diabetes, or has had previous stroke episodes. Females also have slightly increased risks. Anticoagulants such as warfarin or direct oral anticoagulants, TOAX, like apixaban, rivaroxaban, or dabigatran are usually needed lifelong to prevent stroke formation. To control heart rhythm, medications are used, beta blockers, for example, metoprolol, calcium channel blockers, for example, diltiazem, or digoxin. The aim is to maintain a heart rhythm of less than 110 beats per minute. Antiarrhythmic drugs are used in atrial fibrillation to control the heart's rhythm, rhythm control, and to maintain normal sinus rhythm after it has been restored. The most commonly used drugs are propafenone, sotalol, and amiodarone. If medications are ineffective, electrical cardioversion is used. This involves using electric shocks to reset the heart's rhythm. Catheter ablation is a minimally invasive procedure to destroy abnormal electrical pathways. It is used for recurrent atrial fibrillation not controlled by medications. Effective treatment is achieved in more than 70% of patients if managed properly.